Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. If I sound a little hoarse today, I think I got something from the airplane ride home or maybe from the cruise ship. I'm feeling a bit under the weather, but I still wanted to do a quick video because I'm going to swap into a new bag. I have a double unboxing slash reveal, one of the bags I've never used and the other one I have used and it is from Italy, from my trip to Italy. On our cruise, we went to Italy, Greece, France, and Malta. And we went to several stops in Greece and in Italy. So the day of the trip that I'm gonna talk about today is the day we went to Sorrento. Sorrento is beautiful. It is right on the coast, and the views as you're driving up to it are jaw dropping. And then the town itself is absolutely gorgeous. I took some photographs. There were gobs of people there and it was definitely crazy, but we were allowed to have some time to shop while in Sorrento. The tours we go on always allow time to shop. I think they think it's good for the economy. It probably is, but I bought a few things. Sorrento was known for its leather craftsmanship as well as for inlaid wood. And the other thing was a limoncello. I think I'm saying that right. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Under the Tuscan Sun, that movie talks about limoncello. And ever since I saw that movie, I have kind of wanted to go to the places in it. And Positano is one of the places. We saw the road sign for Positano, but we didn't go there. But I think Sorrento is pretty close. And it actually had the first limoncello business there in that location, I think for the country of Italy anyway. So lemon patterns were everywhere when we were there. Bright colors, bright lemon patterns on clothing, on kitchen type things like aprons and hot mitts for your hands and table runners, just bright patterns to reflect not only the lemons that they grow there and the tile that is everywhere, the beautiful ceramic tile patterns that you can find in many of the cities along the coast in Italy. So I was determined to find a shirt that had lemons or a lemon pattern on it or something beautiful color wise. And this is the one I found it is a nothing fancy, but I absolutely love the pattern on it. And I actually wore it the next day on the tours we took that day. So I can pop a picture of me wearing it in, but I just thought this was so pretty. I love the rope that is woven through it. It reminds me of the seaside, kind of like that Capucines I showed you in my last video had rope and chain detail. So it sort of captures the sea as well as the lemons that they grow there in the Sorrento area and the limoncello that they make. So I tried both kinds of limoncello. They have the straight up kind and then they have some that's mixed with cream. And the stuff that's mixed with cream is delicious. The straight up kind was nasty in my opinion. It was so harsh. It was not my cup of tea, but the cream kind, I would recommend it wholeheartedly. So now on to the first bag reveal. And this is the bag I bought in Italy and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So I saw this tote bag as I was walking down the streets of Sorrento and I fell in love with it. I think it is absolutely beautiful. It is leather, it smells wonderful, and it has the tile pattern that is very reminiscent of many of the patterns that they have there in Italy. And so for that reason, it really reminds me of my trip. And it is comfortable to wear. It is raw suede on the inside. So it's basically the back of the leather and it ties up at the top. And it has a little zippered pouch here that says made in Italy, but let me just tell you, this bag is not gonna win any quality awards. It is just stitched together without finishing on the edges. And it does have like a base shaper 
that's built into it that says the brand and that brand is Sarah Burglar. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. But in Italy, in both Florence and in Sorrento, there were tons of leather shops that had just gobs and gobs of bags and many of them were replicas of Bottega Veneta and Hermes and many, many other brands. And I really didn't want a replica of one of those made out of Italian leather. I just don't want to do that. And they weren't exact replicas. Most of them anyway, didn't say Hermes or, you know, Valentino or Bottega Veneta. There were a few that did that were like straight out replicas, but most of them I would say were more dupes. But I felt like this, and you may be able to correct me if I'm wrong, this was sort of a unique design. I mean, I know there's probably other tote bags that tie at the top like that, but especially with the pattern on it, I felt like it was a unique design that reminds me of my trip, and I just really love it. It feels really squishy, and the best part is, is that this bag only cost $39. Yep, you heard that right. It was $39, so how could I resist? I mean, even if it doesn't hold up, it's beautiful and it was only $39. My only complaint using this bag is that the suede sheds on what I put inside of it, but it does brush off easily. So other than that, this is a fantastic $39 handbag. Now, when I was in Rome, I went to three different Louis Vuittons and a Fendi, and I'm gonna show you the footage I got from that in a future video. I was on a mission to find a bag. And I guess I also went to a few other places. I went to Prada and let me see, Gucci. And I was on a mission, but I did not find a bag. I did find a luxury item at one of those stores. So I am going to reveal what that luxury item is again in an upcoming video. But when I didn't find a bag at the three Louis Vuittons that I visited in Rome, I sort of refocused what I wanted to look for and buy on this trip. Because as we stopped at each of the next destinations, I found some amazing things that weren't bags and I just couldn't pass them up. And then I basically blew my budget. Now, I didn't blow my budget on the $39 bag I just showed you, but I am going to do a video about each of the days that we went different places where I did find something special and talk about what that item was or is and also where I found it. Years ago, my grandmother on my mother's side went to Sorrento and she purchased this beautiful inlaid wood music box. And so I knew that Sorrento was known for making inlaid wood products. And we stopped at a factory that made like carvings. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of them carvings out of shells into jewelry, basically. And then we went to Sorrento where they had these inlaid wood products at the factory we stopped at there. Now, I didn't stick around to find out how they made it. I was on a mission to shop and all I picked up while I was wandering in the streets again was this shirt, the bag I just showed you. And then I also got some inlaid wood coasters from one of the shops as I was basically leaving the shopping area of Sorrento. And these I think are quite lovely. They basically show different scenes from Sorrento. So you can see the volcano right here and you can see the buildings like basically going straight down into the sea. And then this one has a lemon tree in the forefront with the volcano in the background. And this one, I don't know the name of these trees. I learned it when I was there, but then I forgot. But they had those trees everywhere. So even though I have coasters in my living room, sometimes when we have company, we don't have enough. And so those are gonna be for the times where we need a whole bunch of them for like our coffee table or something like that. So I'm excited to have that little memory from Sorrento. After I picked up those things, I went to a little cafe with the others in my group and I had the best pizza there that I had the entire trip. 
Italian pizza is amazing. I totally went off keto for it. I think it was the favorite thing that I ate while I was there, and I had it probably four or five times, and I wish I could have it again. It was so good, and I'm telling you, the wheat or whatever they use in it over there, I think it's GMO free and it did not bother my stomach like pizza and pastas do back here in the United States. It was wonderful. One of the reasons that I have a keto diet here is because the grain products really do bother me. They give me like bloating and pain in my abdominal region. And so that's part of the reason why I eat a keto lifestyle type diet. And I went off it while I was there and I had no problems and came back and didn't even gain any weight, which is nice. So I did promise you a double unboxing slash reveal. My other thing that I want to reveal to you is a new Melody Cecile dress up your purse handbag that I got the day that I left for the trip. And so I have had this one just sitting here while I was gone and I want to use it today. And so I thought we would unbox it together and I would switch from my travel bag, which is my Lululemon everyday, I think it's the everyday or everywhere belt bag in the larger size. And I'm going to switch into this bag. Her packaging is on point. She has a really nice dust bag, a slider box. This bag is currently sold out, but you can order it or pre-order it in several different colors, at least three right now. So if you are interested, you can get one like it. And the price on these with my discount code, which is HBHW15, is amazing. It's less than $250. If I remember right, it's around $228. And it takes a couple months to get it, but it is worth the wait. So I got the Black with Silver Hardware Paris 15. Now, since she launched this one, it has also come out with like a blackened hardware. And then we also have a lavender gray color as well as the light pink with like a darker pink trim. And they are all so beautiful. I literally want them all, but I don't have enough room for all of them in my collection. So let's go ahead and take off the wrapping and I want to show you my belt bag and how I have it situated from traveling. I have it pretty much the same. I added one thing into it since I've gotten back. So this is the everywhere or everyday belt bag. I can link these down below. They are great. I use this more than the two luxury bags I brought on my trip. I use this one and then the brown one I have almost every day. I think I carried a luxury bag one day on the trip. You really have to watch out for pickpockets and I feel like that made it so where I was a bigger target if I was carrying something like that. So first in here I have my Fendi card holder. Now I did not use this on the trip but I just switched back into it because it does hold some of the items like my credit card, my target card, my license. It just holds everything a little better when you put it in a larger bag. When I was on the trip, I used these pockets here in the Lululemon belt bag to hold cards. And then I had one wallet-like card holder. And most of the time I didn't even use this. I just carried like my ID or my passport and a credit card and that was it. So I just pulled all the stuffing except for one lonely little piece of silica out of this bag. And I'm gonna put my first card holder in. And then I'm gonna put the second one and then I used the back pocket here of the Lululemon belt bag for cash. And if I had any coins, I put them in this zipper pocket on the back. And I also put my cell phone in that while I was traveling. I've got probably a little bit of sunscreen on it there. This is a pouch from a Felici bag. And you can pick these up on eBay or on Facebook groups that are Louis Vuitton separately from the Louis Vuitton Felici. And I like it for carrying cash because you can throw your coins in there as well. So I have my two wallets side by side and then that Felici pouch insert. And then for the back of the bag, and I think this is how I'm gonna pack it. I don't always pack it the same way, but I'm gonna put the pouch that I keep things like lip gloss and concealer in there and then I have a powder compact a pouch that I keep medicine in these two items I'm going to actually throw below the pouch because most of the time I don't need them an airpods case 
I have a car key. This is not the right car key. I need to actually leave this one behind. I'm gonna stick my comb in this back pocket here. There's also this nice back pocket. And then I've got a few random odds and ends like a nosebleed pack, some band-aids and a flosser stick. I'm just gonna stick those all in the back. So that's all loaded up. You can see I still have plenty of room for my phone to stick it in there. But then there's also the back pocket on this bag. So let's see if this closes up nicely. What I love about these Paris 15 bags is that the clasp closes really easily. It's really easy to find. And then it has this like textured bit around the hole that keeps it from getting scratched up or at least showing scratches. This bag has two straps that come with it. It has a black one with a cotton type webbing. And then it has a black Vaquetta strap. And I love the Dress Up Your Purse Vaquetta straps on her newer bags. They're not shiny or highly treated like the Damier Ben leather can be. And they are just really comfortable. I use these on my Louis Vuitton key balls as opposed to the web straps that come with the key balls, which I know is probably a little strange, but I just love the slimline look of these as opposed to what the Louis Vuitton key balls come with. And then if you look at the keeper here, it is so snug and so tight. And every single one of the straps from Dress Up Your Purse, it seems like is really on point with having a good keeper. And that is not the case with so many of the luxury brands as well as the more contemporary ones. I have so many issues with this not holding the tail of the strap correctly. So I love this bag with this strap. The trim on the bag is the same sort of vaquetta. This is nice and padded, feels great. And then it has kind of the slightly more shiny vaquetta trim around the edges here, which picks up with the strap. I love the two different kinds of leather. I can also put my phone in this back pocket, which is really nice. And I'm gonna grab the Louis Vuitton strap real quick to show you how it looks with this bag. One of the reasons I wanted this color so bad with the silver hardware is because not only do I have my keep all straps in black with the silver hardware, but I also have another strap from Louis Vuitton that has been on the way for quite some time. I received it and had an issue with the keeper, surprise, surprise. And so because of that, I had to send it back and they repaired it and I may have it sometime in the next two weeks. They've had it forever. My original order was placed, I believe, on May 2nd. So the whole process is taking quite some time. So here is my brand new Paris 15 and it is decked out with a Louis Vuitton strap. This is how I'm gonna wear it today. I do love the Vaquetta strap that it comes with. I like the cotton strap as well. It's very comfortable, but because I like to mix and match my brands and my straps, I'm gonna probably choose this one first unless I want a more dressed up look and then I'll choose that Vaquetta strap instead. One more bit of bling I wanna to add to this bag is this strap that I picked up a long time ago from Etsy. It's not available anymore. It's not Louis Vuitton, but it does have the little flowers on it and it sort of dresses the bag up a bit. I think that that looks really cute. Actually, now looking at it, I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear it or not, but it's kind of a fun way to accessorize it even just a little bit more. If I pull the strap up, that pulls those D-rings up and it drapes a little differently. You'll have to let me know what you think of that combo. I'm leaning towards no. I thought that that would be good, but I'm leaning towards no. I think it almost needs to be a little longer. This strap was originally 23 inches long, I think, this chain strap, but I shortened it and it works better for some of my bags now, like the Busey bags. I like how it hangs on those better. But unfortunately, it made it so where it's not quite as nice on this new Paris 15 from Dress Up Your Purse. One other thing I wanted to mention about the Paris 15 is that the first one I got, the brown one, when I opened it, it had a bit of a chemical smell, which apparently was from the glue that they were using when they assembled it. And it was non-toxic and it went away within like 10 days. This one smells like leather. It doesn't have that same scent that the first one did. And the first one smells like leather now. It's just that I think that glue had to 
I don't know, the, the glue scent had to wear off and then I could smell the leather. This one, I can smell the leather right from the start. So I'm not sure if Melody switched what glue she was using or if this one aired out before it got to me, but I am loving not only the feel and the texture of the Togo leather, but the scent is delicious too. And you all know I like to sniff my bags. Ooh, it smells so good. So I hope you enjoyed this video featuring some of my vacation as well as two new bags. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there is the same. It's the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at thehandbaghousewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.